Election night on Sky News is going to be very, very exciting. Not least because I've got this magic little box of tricks which will be able to help us understand what is happening on the night as it happens in real time. What is the state of the race at the moment? Well, we've talked about before about what matters in a US presidential election is, of course, the swing states. They are putting them in, in grey there. When we put how many different electoral college votes they're worth. Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. Between them, they're worth about 90 electoral college votes. Remember, you need 270 electoral college votes in order to win win the election. This is where this presidential election, these seven arenas will be decided. What do we know about the current state of the race in these places? Well, frankly, it is just very difficult to tell because the polling is so narrow. We have not had a presidential election that is this narrowly contested since 2004, arguably in modern history. In each of these states, every single one, the current leader is less than one percentage point in front of their opponent. It is a statistical rounding error at this point. But just for the sake of argument, let's take who is currently in the lead on the aggregate of those polls in each of these states just to see where it leaves us. So Nevada, Kamala Harris, narrowly in front. Arizona, a state that uh, Joe Biden won for the first time for many years as a Democrat, uh, Donald Trump is in front this time. Georgia again, Donald Trump narrowly ahead in that state that Joe Biden won in 2020. Uh, Wisconsin, Kamala Harris is in front. And in Pennsylvania, again, by an absolute hair's breadth in the Keystone State, Kamala Harris is ahead. Where does that leave us on this current map? Well, it leaves us with all that's left on the board, which is Michigan and North Carolina, two states where it's basically almost impossible to, stay, to say on the basis of the current polling who is ahead. And you can see that in this scenario, albeit it is just one scenario, you can see that if Kamala Harris won Michigan but lost uh, North Carolina, she would narrowly be ahead and, and Donald Trump would have to win too. But to be honest, the point of this is to illustrate that there are different combinations different paths for either candidate and each of them is extremely important which is why enormous amounts of money is being poured into each and every one of these places if you are a resident of one of these places quite frankly in a sense Kamala Harris and Donald Trump neither of them are leaving you alone right now let me give you another scenario maybe a nightmare scenario uh, for both candidates uh, as well let's um, let's for the sake of argument say that uh, Donald Trump wins in uh, Nevada there, and let's uh, see where we're at, 270 to 268. So not much of a difference at all. We're basically just moving over Donald Trump, Nevada, into Donald Trump's column. You can see on the basis of this result, Kamala Harris narrowly wins, but literally she's on the nose. She's on 270. And there's a particular peculiarity about this scenario, which is you, you can see here, this is the state of Nebraska. Not many people live there. It's a, it's a solidly Republican state, very agricultural, very few town centres or, or, or cities or anything like that. But you can see we've painted it in in blue and red. That's not because we're undecided or a bit confused. It's about a peculiarity of the electoral system in Nebraska and Maine for that matter. All 48 other states basically do a winner takes all system. If you get one more vote than your opponent in that state, then you take all of the electoral college votes. So you get one more vote in California, you get all 54. Nebraska does it a bit differently where they actually split their electoral college votes. Basically, if you win in the district of the, one of the uh, congressional districts of, of Nebraska, you basically win in the city of Omaha, then you basically take one of their electoral college votes. So you can see that would make the difference in this scenario because if Donald Trump were to win in Omaha, then there would be a tie, 269 apiece. What happens then? Well, then I'm afraid it goes to the House of Representatives, something that it hasn't, hasn't happened since the 19th, early 19th century. What else can we do with this box of tricks? Well, it's going to be very exciting because, of course, what really matters on the night isn't just about uh, the swing states, which we talk about a lot, but frankly, it's the, like, counties within those states. So we go back to the 2020 presidential election. How did Joe Biden win it? Well, we can look back at the data. He won by winning in counties like Maricopa County, which is the home of Phoenix in Arizona. He won there by uh, a difference of 45,000 votes. This is how you win a presidential election. You basically run up margins big enough in enough places, in basically places that most people will never have heard of, and just little by little, you eventually win the presidency. Other counties we're going to be keeping an eye on on the night. Well, let's go to Georgia, for example. All of these counties here around Atlanta, key places for the Democrats, and if they've got any chance or hope of winning that state, they've got to run up the table in counties like uh, DeKalb County there. These are all the Atlanta suburbs. Gwinnett County there, again, Biden managed to just really get like 58.4% of the vote, 72.6% of the vote in these big urban centres. Then there are the uh, traditional 
uh, swing counties as well. So we look at Pennsylvania here, Erie County, an absolutely classic bellwether county here. Think of it like Swindon or somewhere like that in the UK. That sort of constituency it usually goes where the winning candidate is. And look, in 2020, Joe Biden carried it by a margin of 1,400. And 17 votes. One thing is absolutely certain, whatever happens on the night, which is bound to be unpredictable, it is going to be very exciting.